Good morning. So today's project, I'm going to improve the ventilation in this container that we have because right now it's not good enough. Buckle up for safety as I give you a day in the life of online. No, not online. I'm actually there. Facilities maintenance. So we have this storage container. The problem is, is that they only have little small vents up in the top corners. Now we live in a part of the world where there is a lot of humidity. And I've seen them perform just fine when they're in other environments, but when it's out in the open like this and constantly exposed uh, to uh, sun and cold, uh, which varies the temperatures more than it would say if it was located under cover or in a shaded area. What ends up happening is you get much more condensation buildup on the inside. And where that is evident here is, <laughs> take a look at the, at the mold growing on the inside of this ceiling. Like, it's surprising how much there is. It was cool overnight. And look at this. It's wet. <laughs> so it's funny because mildew and mold should only grow on organic surfaces like paper or wood. That's why you'll get mold in a bathroom because your drywall has paper in it or the wood can get moldy. Things that can um, decompose. Metal doesn't decompose, but when you get so much condensation Maybe there are components in the paint that are, that are allowing it to do this. Or maybe it's just a layer of dust and the dust itself is organic. But now that I'm actually standing on this side uh, with the sun coming at me this way, let me show you how much moisture is on the ceiling. It really shows up from this angle. So anyways, short of putting air conditioning in here or a dehumidifier, an active dehumidifier to try and keep this humidity down, uh, I'm going to improve the ventilation. It already has vents in it. You can see where they're coming through here and here. But the problem with vents like this is it's kind of like trying to blow air into a pop bottle, right? There's no air exchange happening. And without air exchange, the condensation or the humidity that's in here doesn't really have any place to go other than to settle on the cold surfaces because warm air can hold more humidity, hold more water vapor than cold air can. So what's being suspended in the air in like minute particulates, as soon as the surface gets cold at nighttime, what ends up happening is that air that was warmed up during the day that's holding that water vapor. It cools down when it hits the cold surface and ends up dropping its water in the form of condensation. And you end up getting this. It actually is destroying stuff that's stored in here. This door is a perfect example. Uh, the whole thing looked like that a year ago. It was a beautiful door and it was leaned up against the wall and you can see all the water damage here. Pieces of plywood that we've had stored in here. Some of them are starting to get a little uh, surface mildew on them as well. We have uh, furniture here from our, our drama room. Right, we've got spare seats and whatnot. I've sealed them up as best I can in their boxes, but over time, they too will get ruined if I don't do something about this. So what am I gonna do to create this air exchange? In order to properly uh, ventilate this thing, I have to put more vents in, putting them in along the bottom. That will allow air to be drawn in through the bottom. And in order to facilitate that, I'm putting that vent there in the roof. And so that will then allow air to be drawn in through the bottom and come out through the top, the roof. It's kind of just a natural convection effect that's going to be helped slightly by the fact that that will, uh, it's a turbine vent. Uh, so hopefully that will keep up to the amount of humidity that um, we're getting in this thing. First thing I want to do is figure out where I want to cut my hole for this vent right here. I want it to be centered, so I'm going to measure width, I'm going to measure length, and find my center. Center is found right there. So 
Let's open this up and see what kind of uh, hole I need to cut. Because that will be dependent on things, things like this. I haven't even broken out the tools yet and already I can see my first challenge or potential complication with this. This piece of flashing is designed to be on a flat surface. Um, I say that because once this flashing is secured, then this slips over top and gets attached mechanically, i.e. screws, to the flashing and then this you see these three tabs here they align with these little indent tabs here these spots right here so then that will mount on that now if I try and take this and bend it so that it conforms to the profile of the roof because this roof has ridges in it for strength if I do that this will no longer fit on this because this will be mangled. And at the same time, I need to make sure that this is entirely waterproof. And the only way that I can do that, I think, is if I don't cut my hole like this. Because if I cut my hole like this, I'm literally cutting my hole in a lower channel here where water could get in. So I think the safest thing to do would be to cut this here. If any water does happen to sneak past here, it won't flow into the container because there's this metal ridge right here on either side. Now, does that reduce the amount of potential air that this could draw out? Yes, it does, but it does not reduce it so much. This, this will still be greater than all those other little vents that are in the sides. Even with just opening up this much, I'm still looking at a greater uh, volume. Now, once I've cut this out and I've attached this to the roof itself, I can seal underneath here to fill in these gaps. But again, that's sealant. It's not, it's not a mechanical seal, which I prefer mechanical seal over sealant but sometimes you can only do what you can do so I'll figure out what I can cut based on that and just do that now before somebody jumps all over me in the comment section and I do appreciate the comments but I actually went to a roofing supply store, uh, one of the local ones here, to try and find a, a roof vent seal, a flexible roof vent seal that would conform to the um, to the profile of the this flat roof surface and also seal around the uh, the base of this turbine vent. But the only thing they could find was something that would fit around a square vent. They didn't have anything in a round configuration. I would have needed a very large one in about a 13 inch and I'm pretty sure they make them uh, but they didn't have it and so I am doing what I can without one I think I will be successful in the way that I'm going to do it although I do recognize that there is such a thing as a, a roof vent seal that would I think fit around about a 13 inch vent and be able to conform to the profile of the roof of this container Having said that, I would have to um, modify the base of the vent mounting system itself because the way that it is, this boot seal would be mounting to the base of that. It wouldn't be like, because it's in the way, but it's also necessary in order to be able to mount the actual vent itself to the roof, if you know what I mean. That flat base that attaches to the actual roof itself. I would have had to trim that 
to maybe so it's only like three quarters of an inch around so that the rubber seal that would end up conforming to the profile of the roof could actually fit over top of that piece. So they kind of get in the way of each other. There may not actually be a perfect solution for mounting a turbine vent like this that has a flat mounting base on the roof of a container that has a profiled edge. So I'm going to try this. If I'm making another video a year from now to show how I'm improving it, we'll know that it didn't work. So when I look at the size of this hole compared to, as I was mentioning earlier, the small holes that these vents provide, the size of this has the capacity for much more air volume to pass through it than those holes. Therefore, convection will happen. I hope that's making sense. I've put a grinding wheel on my grinder and I've uh, cleaned up the edges here so they're no longer as sharp as they were. Um, I think at this point what I should do is uh, grab a bucket of soapy water or something and clean this area up. Looks like a gigantic top hat, like Mr. Hyde wore in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. So now, next step, uh, I need to create a seal all the way around here. The flat spots are easy. The challenging spots are going to be these dips right here, and uh, and choosing the right product because there are a number of different products that one could use. So. What did I choose? Well, the one I chose is the one that roofers use. I got it from a roofing company. It's not an advertisement. I'm not sponsored or anything like that, but this is a product that is silicone based. It sticks to all kinds of metal, even painted metal, uh, ceiling metal, roofs, windows, doors, metal, vinyl, siding, gutters, and vents. Uh, and it remains permanently flexible and will not shrink. The reason that is important is because this metal roof and this metal vent there's my top hat over there, is metal. And it will expand and contract with the changing temperatures. And so I need something that uh, can move with it and uh, that the seal won't break. So I have three tubes of it. I hope it is enough to build up these depression trough areas to create a somewhat level surface. <laughs> and uh, it may take a couple applications in the sense that I'll lay as much down as I can, put my vent flashing on, and then uh, have to fill in the gaps. Well, I managed to do it with one and less than a half of another tube. Um, <laughs> that's pretty good considering how much I filled in the, uh, the depression areas with, but I actually think it's gonna work. I don't know if I can get you an angle here, but that is all sitting up proud of the, uh, the flat surfaces. And so my, uh, my top hat over there should settle down nicely on here and I should have a complete seal all the way around. Um, in fact, since there's no point in having that tube just sit already opened, it'll just go bad. I am going to continue to put more down. I might fill in this area here a little bit. I could do build another one across here, put it, make a double, double wall. I've already purchased the stuff. I'm not taking it back. And so I might as well uh, use as much of it as I need. Now, the reason I drew lines is one, so I would know exactly where to uh, place my sealant, but two, then I know exactly where to put this guy. I do put it back down. This is, uh, yeah, I think this will work well. Now I'm gonna put a few uh, self-tapping screws, stainless steel ones, so they will not corrode on the uh, high points. 
the ridges. Okay, the flashing is mounted and I was able to seal both inside the inside part of the trough as well as the outside part of the trough. Let me give you a better look here. And so that should prevent any water from being able to migrate underneath the flashing and get into the container itself. So I'm going to call this sealed and uh, finish the job just by putting the, uh, the top on the hat. Something that's also worth mentioning is that the roof of the container is domed. So there will be a natural propensity for the water to drain to the sides, not collect in the middle. And just in case anybody is thinking that the size of this opening isn't large enough and it won't be effective, uh, the limitation is these tiny little holes in each of these vents. Uh, so you can see why when they ship from the company that designs and makes these things, that uh, these four little vents up in the top corners are not going to provide enough ventilation in a climate where you have uh, extreme temperature swings and high humidity, like we do here on the wet coast of British Columbia. It's just not enough. It's starting to dry out now at least, because I've had the door open for a while. I'm hoping that uh, creating a venting system that will actually naturally convect, that that'll be enough. Um, beyond that, I'm putting your container in an area with its uh, partially shaded, uh, at least from the, the hottest part of the day. That also helps um, because that reduces the extreme temperature swing from cold to hot within the container. The temperature stays a little bit more stable. Anyway, I'm going to get those uh, lower vents in now. Rather than using a smaller bit and make a whole bunch of small holes, I've decided to use a step bit and I'm going to make two large holes for each vent. And hope that there isn't anything on the other side. <laughs> Uh, it quits when it gets too hot and it also burns my hand <laughs> this part of the drill gets so hot it's ridiculous I do have a new one I just couldn't bring myself to throw this old one away yet okay that pretty much wraps it up I've got all my vents on the bottom Let's see what they look like from the inside like a couple of holes I just decided I'd rather drill two than nine for each one Let's hope that makes the difference that we needed to make. Thanks for watching. See you next time.